So, now that we've walked the road that led CUSA to where they are today, what are some possible directions that the conference could take in the future? Obviously, there are some themes that the conference has taken in the past, and especially recently, that they could continue to follow into the future. But the choice to expand past 10 teams isn't even one that's necessary at this point, given that conferences are capable of surviving on their own at a high clip with just 10 teams. Look at the old Big 12 and Sunbelt conferences. Obviously, the point of this video will be made irrelevant in a few years with whatever decision the conference elects to make. The purpose of it instead is to look towards the possible avenues for G5 and FBS expansion, with CUSA being the topical team to utilize towards the future. Some sources indicate that Sam Houston State, Jacksonville State, and Kennesaw State might be the last teams to move up to FBS for quite some time due to the current landscape, while there are a handful of FCS teams that are outspoken about making the move up. Regardless, it's likely that the collegiate world will continue to change, and right in the middle of it is Conference USA. Let's look at a few avenues that they could possibly take. To start, let's look at some of the rules and logistics surrounding FCS to FPS transitions for schools, since that's a majority of what realignment moves will look like in the future. There are some conferences, like the combined WAC ASUN conference, that plan to move up to the FBS level all at once, but a vast majority of these transitions will take place individually. While attendance minimums are a thing of the past for FBS membership, theoretically opening the door for more teams to join FBS conferences, as of 2023, the application fee to go from FCS to FBS has risen from a mere $5,000 to $5 million, according to Javon Edmonds of The Messenger. There are also raises to other monetary issues. Schools are now required to provide 90% of their scholarships across 16 sports over a span of two years. Some schools don't have 16 sports, which would mean they would have to add sports in accordance to Title IX to start the road to consideration, which would cost even more money. While these requirements would not have to be met until their first year in FBS, it's still a considerable hurdle for quite a few FCS teams hoping to reach the next level. Okay, now that you're sufficiently bored, let's take a look at some potential options. As we went over in the previous video, CUSA had a tendency to add teams that were already affiliates for other sports to their full membership. As of 2023, the CUSA has a multitude of sports-specific affiliates. They are Arkansas State for bowling, D2 Dallas Baptist for baseball, Florida Atlantic for beach volleyball, Missouri State for beach volleyball, Stephen F. Austin for bowling, Tarleton State for beach volleyball, TCU for beach volleyball, Tulane for beach volleyball and bowling, UAB for beach volleyball, Valparaiso for bowling, Vanderbilt for bowling, and Youngstown State for bowling. Now when we boil this list down to teams that could feasibly move up to the FBS level and would have interest in moving to the CUSA, we're left with only six teams. We can assume a school like Dallas Baptist as a D2 school would face too many hurdles to be added to the FBS anytime soon, so we can safely eliminate them. Valparaiso, a basketball power in Indiana, would certainly elevate the conference's basketball standing. However, their football team is a member of the non-scholarship Pioneer Football League, so elevating from non-scholarship to FBS with the number of scholarships being required would be a significant hurdle. It's been a while since teams like Marquette and DePaul were members of the conference, so it's likely that the CUSA sees football membership as a valuable asset to potential expansion targets. We can safely eliminate the Beacons from contention as well. Youngstown State is an interesting potential target. A member of the FCS powerhouse conference, the Missouri Valley Football Conference, with four national titles to their name, the Penguins' historical football excellence would give them an edge over a few other expansion targets already under the CUSA banner. A while back, the Penguins indicated an interest in joining the FBS, with a spearhead on joining the Ohio Heavy Mac, but despite heavy fan pushes, those moves have not come to fruition, and little forward movement has been achieved since then. It looks like the hurdles, at least at this point, are too large, and the athletic department is currently content with their standing in the FCS, if we're to believe Ron Strollo in 2016. Or is it Stroyo? Stroyo? Strollo. Strollo noted difficulties with travel, coaches, and finances as tripping points for the Penguins, and while he didn't rule out a move up to the FBS in the future, it would require a significant improvement in finances. The Penguins can also likely be ruled out. That leaves us with Missouri State, Tarleton State, and Stephen F. Austin. The Bears are on record as saying they think they will move to the FBS sooner rather than later, with President Cliff Smart proclaiming as such in 2023. Another impediment to a move would be travel costs and other monetary hurdles, as MSU would leave the Missouri Valley for a conference where they would play anywhere from New Mexico to Florida to Virginia. 
But that being said, the Bears do operate under a spending budget that should put them in the conversation as one of the top spenders in CUSA, and they have made a commitment to improving their football facilities to an FBS level. Their move up from FCS to FBS, whether that be the CUSA or another conference, feels like it'll happen eventually, even if this is the same song and dance they've done since 2011. Tarleton State is another candidate, as they made the shortlist for CUSA expansion over the last couple of years. Having just recently moved to FCS from Division II in 2020, the Texans are already growing at an astonishing rate, with an over 20,000 capacity stadium already under their belt. That being said, it would take them longer than others to join since they're in the midst of a four-year reclassification period instead of a standard two-year one due to their rapid rise. Stephen F. Austin is another interesting case. Also having received interest from the CUSA in their initial expansion research, and also having been a member of that large Wax Sun conference intent on expanding into FBS, their interest is at least hinted at, if not outstandingly spoken. But it at least appears on the surface that the Lumberjacks at least would be more interested in moving up with the rest of the Wax Sun than going about it alone to the CUSA, if one anonymous coach in a Texas football article is to be believed. So of the affiliate members, Missouri State and Tarleton State seem to have the best chances. But what about existing FBS independents like New Mexico State and Liberty before them? As of 2023, there are four FBS independent schools, Notre Dame, Army, Yukon, and UMass. Notre Dame is clearly not interested in joining the CUSA, and Army, while a former member, has been connected to the American more often than not. That leaves us with Yukon and UMass. Would those schools have interest? Short answer is no. UConn obviously has more interest in joining the ACC or Big 12 than they have any interest in anything that could be considered a step down from independence. Their fans value their involvement in the non-football Big East with rivalries and basketball excellence that continues to elevate their program to national championship levels. CUSA would likely not be interested in a football-only membership for a school located in the far northeast of the United States. A UConn squad playing in Las Cruces, New Mexico every other year probably wouldn't be received too well in stores. So what about UMass? A member of the non-football Atlantic 10, they surely have interest in playing high-level football as a way to elevate their program, right? Well, even that might not be so accurate. Let's start with this. UMass's decision to elevate from FCS also ran to the FBS level was most likely an organizational oversight. They make more money getting blown out by teams as an FBS independent than their administration thinks they can make as a member of a conference in which they would be a football-only geographical outlier. According to Underdog Dynasty writer Dan Morrison in 2021, UMass's temporary football-only run in the MAC was half due to their terrible on-field product and half due to the fact that the administration wanted to keep membership of the A-10 for other sports. And football-only membership in an area that values basketball and hockey way more than football likely wouldn't draw much money to the program, if any at all. UMass was on the list for potential AAC admission but didn't make it because their stadium is abysmal, they aren't all that near the Boston market in Amherst, they make very little money as a program, and their fan base and administration is apathetic. That's a recipe to get passed on by just about every conference, even a CUSA that we're pretending is desperate for teams in this hypothetical, which may not even be true. But it's not like the Northeast isn't capable of adding another team to the conference. One school that's been very open recently about elevating to the FBS level is Delaware. They've recently announced significant additions to their athletic facilities, and their operating athletics budget in the Colonial Athletic is well above a significant majority of the group of five at $48 million. Insiders to the program have also hinted that the end goal for the Blue Hens is a seat at the FBS table, which is something that they've aimed towards for the last 20 years or so. Should they join the CUSA, the conference most likely to reach out and ask for them to join, they would become the northeasternmost school in the conference. But with Liberty already there, it wouldn't be too far travel-wise for them to make significant trips to Lynchburg, Miami, or Murfreesboro, for instance. Like Missouri State, Delaware is more of a when than an if. So we're left with three possibilities that look the most likely, two of which already have one foot in the conference, and one of which is loudly proclaiming that they'd like to be in somewhere. Are there any more options? Well, yes. I've mentioned some of the other A-Sun teams, like North Alabama and Austin PA might have interest, but with the money barrier being an issue, it's likely they wouldn't make it too far in considerations. What about HBCUs? Jackson State, located in Mississippi, would make a great bridge between schools, right? What about Southern to get back into Louisiana? Or maybe Florida A&M to shore up one of the largest football playing states in the country? North Carolina Central, SC State, or NC A&T could bring the conference back to the Carolinas too. As awesome as it would be to get those schools into an FBS conference, the money issues continue to be a massive barrier, despite the immense fan bases for some higher-end HBCUs. 
These programs are notoriously hit with incredibly low athletic budgets. But if they were somehow able to bring up enough money that the financial barrier isn't so tall, they would each make excellent additions to the CUSA. But I know everybody's thinking it. What about the Hail Mary concept? These schools are always in the back of everyone's minds surrounding FCS upgrades, and for good reason. They're competitive in the majority of sports they field, and since football drives the money bus, their dominance there would definitely be considered a plus. I'm, of course, talking about North Dakota State and South Dakota State, who are perhaps the two most high-profile FCS programs not yet set to join an FBS conference. Surely they'd be a great ad, right? Well, from a football perspective, yes. The Bison are a certain type of dominant, and they would instantly be able to win championships in the conference, if not immediately compete with the Power 5 teams around them. The Jackrabbits are right there with them. But once again, the major force working against these teams joining the CUSA is in the lack of real money available to them. Specifically, the fact that these teams are miles and miles away from anyone else in the conference. They're extreme geographic outliers. For football-only membership, this makes some sense, but the CUSA wouldn't be interested in football-only members or else they would have added UMass or UConn by now. It's roughly a 16-hour drive from Fargo to the campus of Western Kentucky, who would be the closest CUSA member to NDSU if they joined the conference. Heck, the closest FBS team in general to the Bison is Minnesota, and they're close to three and a half hours away. Like it or not, the Bison and the Jackrabbits are severely isolated. Travel costs are a thing. Jeff Kolpak at the Bismarck Tribune even notes that NDSU made just under $2 million in revenue despite being a very successful school. Even the boost in income they'll get by being a member of the conference won't be enough to consistently send teams to Florida or Virginia every week. And remember, they wouldn't join for just football. They'd have to be an all-sports member as well. So if geography is such a big deal, why not add all four Dakota schools to make scheduling easier for them? South Dakota and North Dakota would go with the other two, significantly easing the distance burden on each school by allowing them to play the other three every single season. Well, here's where we run into a significant problem with money once again. Like it or not, these four teams altogether don't bring much money to the table, even if they do bring a lot of success. The media rights deal for the CUSA is already thin, so adding four schools miles and miles away from the rest of the conference who don't significantly raise the money being made under the media deal would be a disastrous monetary decision for every CUSA school, even if they're winning at a high clip in football. Same or just higher amount of money, just four more slices of the pie. A new media deal would likely still be too far distilled. The math at this point just doesn't make sense for any of the Dakota schools to join the CUSA. At least, not right now. But okay, let's just pretend that money isn't an obstacle and that it doesn't even matter. Would NDSU and SDSU even entertain the possibility of joining the CUSA? Even then, I don't think so. Recently, there's been some smoke out west of the Pac-12 finding a way to regenerate itself with the Mountain West. A handful of those scenarios involve the Bison and Jackrabbits joining the Mountain West, or even what the Pac-12 becomes, including a pitch for a 20-team conference with two 10-team branches that shift teams in a relegation fashion. While this does seem far-fetched, it's more likely that the two teams would wait to see what happens there than to jump ship quick to the CUSA. Even a weird option like that is a better one than the CUSA currently is for these schools. And even then, it might not be worth it. Think about it this way. By moving to the CUSA, the Bison and Jackrabbits would be giving up their opportunity to win national championships every season and play their rivals in games they care about to play teams they don't care about with a significantly smaller chance of winning national championships. A perfect season from a group of five team doesn't guarantee a playoff victory. Just ask Cincinnati or UCF. Even in an extended playoff, it's likely an undefeated CUSA champion gets a poor draw. It's a lot easier to win a play-in game against Western Illinois than it is against Alabama. We can also probably rule out any of the Dakota schools. So what was the purpose of this video? Obviously, there's a realignment boom in college sports right now, and articles get made every week or so that basically boil down to, hey, wouldn't it be cool if these teams were in this conference? But at the end of the day, we have to recognize that realignment moves aren't made for the players or the fans or even the schools themselves. They're made for money. If a conference does not gain money from adding a school, even if the school is very good, it won't be added. Hence why the Pac-12 didn't add Boise State, and why the general consensus is that SMU is buying their way into the ACC. But what does this mean for the CUSA in particular? Given the world around them, we may be eager to look at a 10-team conference and assume that it has to expand in order to survive, when the actuality may in fact be the opposite. 
Are there four schools that could make good expansion options? Sure, and probably more, too. But from the outside, we don't know the full story on the finances of the conferences with those schools in them. At the end of the day, it's all conjecture, and the decision to expand or not won't be made by essayists on the internet like myself. When I first thought about making this video, a few comments noted that it was a bad idea, because it would surely be proven wrong in short order. Not like that hasn't affected any of my other videos before, but it's a good point still. This is simply an exercise in thought, and like other exercises in thought, it's good for one thing primarily, spurring discussion. There are some of you out there that are surely more knowledgeable on this topic than I am, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic in the comments below. Personally, I think that the CUSA isn't in dire need to expand right now, but that teams like Missouri State and Delaware would be the top two options to get to 12 should they desire it. But again, that's me taking a small amount of information and forming a surface opinion about it. At the end of the day, it's not our call, and that's probably a good thing. But regardless, the CUSA is on the forefront of an interesting issue in college sports today, and their call will once again reverberate throughout college sports. Thanks for watching. Remember to be civil in the comments. I'll see you next time.